You're listening to TGI Sports Talk with your host, Keith Angle, on Northeast Streaming Sports. Good morning, everybody. Keith Angle with TGI Sports Talk. We're live on TGI Sports Talk, of course, and the Northeast Streaming Sports Network. Oh gosh, what a, it's a very interesting morning here in Northeast uh, uh, New York, upstate New York, I should say, East Greenbush. Still the only live streaming sports webcast in East Greenbush, New York, and I will hang my hat on that as long as I can. So it's feeling like a July morning. It's like 60 degrees and humid here. Interesting. Rainy, a little, little nasty, but no snow. Uh, first, I want to start by thanking my guest from last week, Chuck Everson from uh Villanova, obviously the 1985 national champions, and Sonny Spiro from Syracuse. We had a great chat last week. We chatted about the old Big East and continued our conversation, uh, our March Madness conversations with players that have participated in the tournament and in many cases won the tournament. On that note, don't forget, Wednesday, March 31st, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Live, we're going to do our final four preview show, and we've got a great lineup. My guest today, Gene Smith, is going to be a part of that show. I thank him for that. Ken, uh, um, uh, Rex Walter, sorry, from uh, Kansas, World, uh, NCAA champion. Butch Lee from Marquette, NCAA champion. Larry Farmer, three-time NCAA champion with UCLA. Tom Keegan, uh, former sports writer. Uh, he is a sports writer. I shouldn't say former sports writer. And uh, has covered 20 uh, final fours. Uh, and we'll have some surprises as well. Mac from Mac and Jack will be my co-host along with Big Shaw. All So to, to today's show, Gene Smith is my guest. Georgetown Hoya from 80 to 84, I want to say. Part of the 1984 Georgetown NCAA champions. As I said, we continue that run. Gene was a great player on some great teams, and he had a lot to contribute. I know he'll uh, maybe downplay that just a little bit, don't know, but um, he certainly had a lot to contribute to some great Georgetown teams. We're going to talk about the old Big East, maybe the new Big East, Coach Thompson, obviously some of the great players that he played with. So let's bring Gene in this morning and see how he's doing out in California, and I can't say sunny California, I guess, because no, it's not sunny. It's only uh, 5 a.m. Thank you, Gene, for the 5 a.m. Uh, appearance. <laughs> I don't get many of those. <laughs> have you been to bed? You said you were nocturnal, so I should ask you, are you up early or are you going to bed late? I want to thank you for having me, uh, Keith. Uh, salute, Hoya salute. Uh, it's awesome to be here. I've had the pleasure of checking out your uh, your pipes, your show, and uh I'm excited about being here, but I have a, a lovely 10-month-old uh, son, and uh, yeah, unlike unlike your previous guest, Sonny Spira, I, I like 5 a.m. practices. Sonny <laughs> <laughs> right. had a problem with uh, going anywhere that was going to practice before, I think, noon. <laughs> yeah, I forget the school. I, I don't know which school he, he mentioned, but it oh, wasn't gosh. Georgetown. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Like the, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of teams that he would not have been able to uh, consider. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So anyway, thank you for being here. Um, I'm going to jump around just a little bit. I want to start by giving you a shout out for your show, uh, yep. Hoya Locker Room. Uh, and tell us a little bit about the genesis of that. We'll we'll kind of start in the present and kind of jump around a little bit. But give us tell me a little bit about the genesis of of the Hoya Locker Room. Okay, I want to thank Chuck and Sonny, your previous guests, for giving me a shout out as well. Um, Hoya Locker Room um, started June of last year, and um, it was a passion project. Um, there's a slogan um, that was if I'm not mistaken, developed by uh, our number one uh, fan page. We don't call it a fan page. It's a fan, pa it's a fan page, F-A-M, on Facebook. Uh, uh, cool. The number one Big East, it's a long name, but the number one Big East Hoya, Georgetown Hoya uh, Facebook page. Impact We Trust. And my deal was how can I help, you know, um, 
Patrick, uh, what, what can I do? And um, that's where, that, that was the genesis of it. And I wanted to celebrate the history, the culture, the tradition, um, because from where I sit, um, that helps with everything. Yeah. Um, that that's a that that that's an umbrella that you want to cast out, and you know we're known for our our privacy. We're known for you know having a program that kind of marches to its own beat. So um, it's 2020, 2021, um, and you know you, you want people to know, okay, this is what we're about. So the genesis of is to celebrate everything Georgetown Hoyas, everything blue and gray. So you, you and Bill Martin, uh, do you do you, you guys are the co-hosts? Is Bill Martin on you to consistently? So there, I had a co-creator, which is Trey Dickerson, and that okay. that for for some people that was pretty interesting. But um, Trey is pretty active online, and uh, he played with he played for Coach Ewing. So my my the way my wheels were spinning at first was I want to I want to always have someone I want someone involved that played for. Patrick and I played with Patrick. Gotcha. So, so I thought about, okay, so that, you know, because he's evolved, he's a coach now. If you would have asked me in 1981 or 82 when I first met Patrick, would he ever be a coach? I'd probably say, no, I don't see that. Um, but again, um, Chuck always says it. It's because we, we have this image of a, a seven footer or a big person not being able to coach. Yeah. We we'll always think of a coach as, you know, being a little guy. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was just, uh, you know, so Trey's involved. I have Markham Stansbury, who was a manager at Georgetown, uh, who's my producer. Um, so yeah, I have, I, right now I have two people involved and I'm working on building a crew as we go along. Um, but it's just, uh, it's been, it's been, it's been incredible, man. Like thinking about giving a shout out to something that I'm doing or it, it you know, that, that's, you know, it, it's, it's a privilege. Yeah, to be able to give George some memories. Well, you're doing a great job there. Thank all, you. All you guys are doing a great job. Continue the good work. Um, let's take you back in time a little bit. Okay. So, you grew up in Washington D.C. Yes, sir. Seemed like everybody went to Damatha, but not you. Damatha uh, or Dumba? Those were the powerhouses. And <laughs> right. Damatha was Catholic, private, and Dumba was in a high public school. So yeah. Public Where'd versus the, private. Yeah, it, it's funny. It seemed like everybody in NC in, in the East Coast anyway came from one of those two schools. It seemed at one time in the seventies oh, wow. and eighties, right? Yeah. So, but so as you go through your high school career and you start getting uh, schools looking at you, I mean, you obviously you end up at Georgetown during the recruitment process. Was there any other uh, opportunities that Gene Smith was looking at, and and uh, in, in what that would have possibly trumped Georgetown and Coach Thompson? I'm smiling because this is an easy story. So there was no recruiting process. Um, I had um, I had one scholarship offer, and that was Morgan State. And um, um, I remember saying to my my older brother, my oldest brother, um, you know, I, I think Georgetown just offered me uh, a scholarship. But you know, Morgan State was you know Morgan State was first. And, you know, what do you think? And I, I can't say on your show, on my show, we curse. He just said, what, what are you, an idiot? Um, so, so my recruitment process, I, I can say with, uh, with one name, and that's Billy Martin. So I, I, for sure, Big John was, you know, recruiting Billy Martin. And he saw this, this kid diving in the stands and taking charges and, yep. you know, uh, passing up layups. And... Uh, yeah, he, uh, the assistant coach was Bill Stein, and they just reached out to my head coach, and the rest was pretty simple. Uh, f you know, fast forward maybe a couple of weeks, uh, there was a we had to fill out an essay, you know, you know, for incoming freshmen, and you know I just thought you know I got a scholarship, I don't have to fill out that essay, and that was the first MF I got from Coach Thompson. <laughs> like, like I, are you out of your? <laughs> Fill out that essay, get it back on time, because without that, your scholarship doesn't exist. So, yeah, it was, it was, man, it was a uh, whirlwind. Is not even um, um, can't even put it into words. Um, it was yeah. just, you know, I, I, my mom was an avid churchgoer. 
um, but she didn't, you know, force that upon us. Um, but, you know, especially when we got a little bit older, but once the Georgetown um, scholarship was secure, like I knew it was real, um, I, I went to the church and I was saved that, I was saved before I went to Georgetown. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And now, I came home to tell my mom, she was like, what, you didn't tell me? I was like, no, nah, I didn't want you to know. That, that, that's <laughs> pressure, that's pressure, Rick. <laughs> that sounds like it. <laughs> uh, so it sounds like, you know, in high school, you were kind of the same player. So maybe you, d you didn't have expectations of, you know, 50 offers and, no. you know. It, it was one of those deals where, um, you know, coach made it clear, I'm, I'm bringing you to Georgetown to be a practice player. Yeah. But you're going to have the opportunity to get a first rate education. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the landscape is a little bit different. Um, but he, you know, I don't know if you had a chance to read his book. Um, I came as a shadow. If you have it, I'll send you my copy. I appreciate that. I, hold me to that. Um, but it's just one of those deals where, uh, Georgetown, even though it was in Northwest DC, and I grew up in Northwest DC, but a different Northwest DC, um, you know, it was a challenge from a lot of us coming out of public schools. Um, cause now we're going to a prestigious white university. Um, right. and for some of us, it's the first time that we're actually, you know, studying and living and, um, cohabitating with white people. And, you know, coach didn't shy away from those conversations and, you know, the, the, the impact that the Hilltop had on me personally, uh, the impact that Coach Thompson had on me personally, like it's, it's you know, it's, it's an afterthought. Like I, I find myself and, you know, I, I've stolen things and I've dressed them up my way. Yeah. Um, but the, the, it's just, you know, it was a perfect, uh, it was a perfect melting pot. And, and I challenged Georgetown um, a lot on Hoya Locker Room because I just think they don't beat their chest enough. Um, because again, in this, it, it's cool to talk about it now, but wasn't nobody really talking about it in the seventies. Yeah. Right? But that was part of the personality of the team in the seventies. <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, the word might get overused a little bit, but there was an intimidation factor sure. with sure. Georgetown. And I don't think it was by accident. Right. Well, I mean, you think about it, we're, we're walking through the airport and coach was intentional about being the first person that he First, first person that you saw was him. Yeah. So you got this 6'10 black guy walking through the airport and behind him in suit and ties. Now, they might not have been good looking suits and ties, but there was, <laughs> there was a coat jacket at the tie, you know, a jacket at the tie walking behind him. That's pretty, you know, that's, that's pretty powerful. It's a pretty yeah. powerful statement. And again, a lot of it we talked about, but as a 17, 18, 19 year old, you, you're not really you're not really comprehending it, right? You're not really, you just know this is this is the way it's done here. Um, but a, a lot of the stuff I learned from, you know, um, um, playing to beat the cheat, which was essentially, if we're going to the dome or if we're going to the palestra, yeah, I'm using those two examples. We're not, ex <laughs> we're not expecting to get any calls. Right. So what's the point about, what's the point of complaining about that? Right. And if you take that and apply that to life, you know, what's 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 the life application? Like no one owes you anything just because yeah. you did such and such and such. earn everything you get. Understand that um, it may you it, it may you may not be set up to, to, to be successful, but that doesn't mean that you don't put forth your best, best effort. Like expect issues, expect problems, expect yeah. landmines like. Um, but a lot of those things just you t you take it, even though it's it's in the heat of the moment. It's basketball we're talking about, but the application of life is so easy. It's a, it's an excellent point, Gene, because <clears throat> I often make it on my shows, and I, I make it to my friends with who are complaining or you know big sports fans, and you know we get screwed by the referees, we get this, we get that, and it ha it happens in life with you know in real life. I manage a team of twenty salespeople, mm -hmm. and they're always you know. This beat me. That beat me. It's kind of it, it is the same thing. You don't put yourself in a position to let referees beat you in sports mm -hmm. and you don't let put yourself in a position to let life beat you in 
real life. Yeah. So I think it's, I'm glad you brought that up because it's an awesome, awesome point. And very well put by you too. Thank, Thank you. you. So you go, you get to Georgetown. If my math is right, you're part of the, the sophomore class of uh, the Big East. Uh, you weren't the fresh the first year. I think you came in the second year of the and Big East. Came in the second, yes. So the Big East is evolving um, into a powerhouse. Maybe not just then, because you know there's. I don't think you guys had an automatic bid to the tournament for the tournament winner and things like that, but. Mm -hmm. Coach, Coach Thompson had obviously started to evolve the program at Georgetown. And you had a couple of uh, uh, veteran players that you played with in the beginning, and Sleepy, Sleepy Floyd and um, uh, gosh, there's another guy. It's, his name is escaping me. Help me out. Eric uh, Smith. Eric Smith. That's uh, the other name I was thinking of. Yep. So you guys become <clears throat> a pretty good team pretty quickly in the early 80s, especially when Patrick got there. So um, the the inaugural season, and I don't know if I'm cutting you off. Can nope, I kind of jump, going, in? jump the, in there? The, the inaugural season of the Big East was 79-80. And yep. George, Georgetown was the first winner of the, I want to say the Big East tournament for sure. And yep. another one. And um, again, I mentioned, um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I had John Doran and Lonnie Doran uh, on Hoya Locker Room um, last week. And they were the architects of Georgetown basketball for me. And, you know, I have to touch on the Georgetown brotherhood, the Georgetown family, because sure. Bebe was the first, and John Bebe Doran, Bebe was the first Hoya to be drafted into the NBA. And I, I bring that up only because me coming in as a freshman wasn't a big deal. The big deal was Fred Brown from the Bronx, New York. Six five point guard at that time were, 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 were a rarity and um, he was incredible. So um, the brotherhood I'm speaking about was Bebe pulling me to the side and saying, teaching me little tricks of the trade, teaching me how to, you know, the, the practices in the summertime mm -hmm. was what Georgetown was all about, was, was, yeah. was built on. So that, that brotherhood thing was so strong. Um, for me, the transition was, was easy. 79-80, Georgetown wins the Big East. 80-81, um, the Big East was held. The Big East tournament was held at the the, um, at the Carrier Dome. I think that was the first year of the, the Carrier Dome. Yeah. Um, nightmare, nightmare playing in the Carrier Dome. Um, but the the big the formation of the Big East, Dave Gavitt, legendary mastermind. The coaches were incredible. PJ Carlissimo, Lou Conseca, Roly Masterino. Awesome Masterino, personalities, right? Masterino. Awesome personalities. I mean, uh, so um, just being a part of that was, was you know, mind-blowing. But again, Keith, that's not something I realized at the time. Yeah. You know, that doesn't, that doesn't hit you until a decade later. Like, it's, it's just like the formation of the Big East was just incredible. I mean, at the time, uh, West Coast was killing us. You know, the, just the dominance of UCLA just was everything. Kids were leaving – you know, the, the metro areas on the East Coast and, and going everywhere. And the Big East just locked it down. <clears throat> and we were, we, we had a different, we had a brand of basketball that was, you know, was, was, was blue collar. Uh, yeah. At least. And, sure and, then, and then the, the, the Big East tournament going to the guard, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. So, yeah, I, I think I touched on your question somewhere in there. But no, you did. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. It was very good. And you, you, you touched on something that, you know, I think I, you and I may have talked about off off uh, off camera at one and during one of our conversations. But I've talked with the all the people that I've had on from the Big East that, you know, everybody points to, you know, the bird magic uh, NCAA final as what really, really uh, uh, jump started the NCAA and March Madness and all this and all this, and it did. But the formation of the Big East was a huge part of the explosion of college basketball yeah. because of some of the things you just mentioned. Let me ask that, have you, have that, you ever been to a Big East tournament, Keith? I have, not in quite a few years, but okay. we used to go quite a bit back in the 80s, actually. Nothing like it. I'm talking about as a fan right now. Yeah. Like the, the 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 city, you got Wall Street there, you got the fashion people there, you got the music people there. Yep. I mean, just the energy, man, is just incredible. So I, uh, you know, I I I have I, I feel connected 
to everyone that, and I want to give a shout out to Big East Rewind, which Chuck and Sonny yep. are hosting. And I, I think it's Nick and Daryl are, are the are the brains. And as they call it, they're the beauty. What a, <laughs> They did say that. I'm not so sure I agree. They're a sleeping beauty. <laughs> 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 but but um, yeah, just, uh, you know, the, the history. And, and if anything, I, I want, uh, I have a godson that is playing at Connecticut. Uh, Jalen Gaffney. And I have yet to have that conversation with him about the Big East. This is Connecticut's first year. Yeah. And I, I, again, the, the, I don't even know if the, the youngsters are interested. Um, but when when I when I get the opportunity, I'm going to pull him aside and, and give him the, the the business about what the Big East was built on and what his what his godfather, you know, helped establish in the in a very small way. Because again, a lot of teams were good one through ten. Yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just, you. There was never an easy game. It was never an easy game. That was one of the great things about it. Yeah. Um, and guys stayed, right? Yes. I mean, I was looking, you know, when I was looking, uh, checking out your years there. I mean, you played the guys you played with. You played for three years with with Patrick and four years with uh, Fred Brown, as you mentioned, and mm-hmm. and everybody, you know, you had a, you, you came into a class that had been there four years together. Mm-hmm. You were with a class that stayed four years together and the guys that came in behind you stayed four years and it created quite a run for Georgetown, obviously. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. The I, second I, year you get to the finals. Second year, second, second, second year we get to the finals. Um, and then my senior year, you know, the, the chip and then 85, they go back to the chip and yeah. I have I have a nice uh, debate going on with our fans from time to time about about which which was the which I feel is the the the, the better Hoya team. Well, that certainly and, would have been one of my questions. Yes. And my, <laughs> my favorite, I always defer to eighty two, because to your point, Keith, there was six seniors on that team. Yeah. And one thing that um, was emphasized at Georgetown was uh, tenure was a senior leadership. Um, you know, I, I always had a phrase, um, cause I worked in sales as well. Um, and I always had, I always had a phrase when you walk into a room, you look for the oldest guy and you watch what he's doing. Right. It's just, it's just that. And, and that was Georgetown because when you got there as a freshman, you, 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 you carried the bags. Uh, we didn't make the Gatorade, but, um, you know, you, you, there were little things that you were always responsible for. If if a senior wanted your seat, he could have your seat. Now, granted, nobody was a, you know, again, I can't curse on your show. Nobody was that guy. But, <laughs> but by the same token, the fact that that tradition was was in place, like that meant something for me. And I carried that on again through my, to the rest of my life. Um, but that, that, that's, that's the thing about playing for Coach Thompson and playing the playing at Georgetown. Um, as a young black man, um, he wasn't, it wasn't about him being paternal. It wasn't about him, you know, trying to be your father, but it was just basically, basically this is the way that it is. This is, this is life. You know, the, it's bigger than just, you know, he had that deflated ball. Um, yeah. kept. it's bigger than just eight to 10 pounds. Um, but by the same token, we are here to win basketball games. You know, we, we, we are here and we are here to establish uh, a culture, uh, establish a tradition. And, and that's, the, you know, that's what I love about the Big East Brethren. Um, they, re- they, they respected that. Yeah. You know, they respected that. I mean, they, they, I, 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 I want to recant or recall a story um, about uh, Ed Pinkney. And I was listening to Ed Pinkney on the Big East for the Requiem, um, mm-hmm. which is awesome. If you, if you want, if you want, uh, to download on the on on the Big East, Big East for the Requiem by Ezra Elderman. Check and that out. Ed, Ed Pinkney talks about in the summertime, he wore his Georgetown stuff. <laughs> like what 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 bigger a tribute? Like you you wanted you wanted to rock your Georgetown stuff as a young black male. Yeah. And you know, again, that's not something I'm telling you that I was aware of while I was there. Sure. So it's interesting you bring up that 82 team as, you know, what you felt was the best team because obviously didn't win a great and a great final. And also should have, should have. (laughs) And a game that really kind of points 
to what we talked about earlier, right? I mean, life throws curves balls at you. And obviously some things, jerk, I mean, I, if I remember right, I'm trying to, uh, Patrick got called for like, you know, it felt like 10 goaltendings in the first two minutes of the game. That was intentional. Was it? Was that that intimidation <laughs> thing? Well, that well, we're well Keith, you, Keith, you think about it. Yeah. When if, if you're going to the hole and somebody blocks your shot, even though it's a goaltending, goaltending call, what's yeah. going to happen the next time you come to the hole? I'm going to take for block, sure. But, but, okay, he did it one time. But then he did it a second time, and yeah. then he did it a third time. So, <laughs> but but the only difference was it was James Worthy, and James Worthy didn't care. He was a grown yeah. man. <laughs> but when you say it was intentional, was uh, did Patrick come up with that on his own, or did Coach Thompson say, "Here's what we need to do to start this game"? I was not privy to any conversation, but having been there, having a great seat, it wasn't an accident <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, so it, that that was intentional. But, yeah, okay. the 82 team, senior laden, Fred yeah. as a sophomore was incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I made a statement, and I'm going to jump around a lot too. You're going to have to – It's work, fine. You do that. We'll, we'll, me in. I made a statement when Patrick got the, the Georgetown job, and my statement was if he coaches the way he played as a freshman, he's going to be just fine. He's going to be just fine. I feel sorry for the kids, <laughs> but he's going to be just fine. And, and, and that, that's the thing. If I, if I could say anything to the five-star kids out there or even some of the – you know, because this kid, Dante Harris, the point guard, was ranked like number 415th in the country. If there's some kids out there like that, Georgetown is a place for you. If you are a five-star and you want to get better and you want to be challenged, Georgetown is a place for you, right? And that's, that, that's how Patrick was. I've never been around a superstar. I haven't been around that many superstars, but I've never been around a superstar like that that embellished and cared more and celebrated the success of his teammates more than anyone. If you watch video and you see uh, a Billy Martin or David Wingate or Reggie Williams doing something, Patrick is running towards you and he's ready to give you the high five. We had almost like a running joke. Don't high five Patrick after you do something well. He's gonna break your hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, again, that game. I mean, it's funny. It's remembered as you know, kind of the beginning of the Michael Jordan legend, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so many things happen. We talked about the the goaltendings at the beginning. You know, Fred had a had a faux pas that. That uh, that hurt and actually set up Jordan's big moment, right? If I believe, or was that after that? I, I'm, maybe I'm misremembering. Um, that. He hit the shot. He hit the shot, and then it came right. You guys had the last possession. Yeah, right? we had yeah. the last possession. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how did that affect uh, you as a team? Uh, that moment, uh, and and Fred, I guess. Uh, th- what happened in those last frantic seconds of that game? So Fred is always one of my favorite. Um, Fred is one of my favorite people. Um, just um, an incredible player. Um, uh, injury plagued after yeah. that sophomore yeah. season. Um, um, but I just got to tell a funny story. When um, we love funny here, Gene. Um, um, coming into our freshman year, we took a trip to Vegas um, to play in what would be considered the a shootout or something now Um, because again, AAU wasn't prevalent. Thompson was just smart enough that, okay, there's a trip. There's some games I can take my freshmen and they can all be on the same team and I can instill my playbook in the summertime. Smart, smart. So when we get, when the season starts, we already been jump started a little bit. And I recall being on the, on, on the plane, Keith, by the way, that was my first time on the plane. I don't know if I said that. I want to say it again. First time on the plane. I'm, I'm there and I'm reading the playbook. And Fred comes up from, from behind and, you know, sits down beside me. Yo, man, what you doing? I'm just checking out the playbook. He says to me, you're not going to need that because you won't be playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I like this guy. Um, but to, to, to fast forward to 82, um, we were already tight knit. Yeah. Uh, another, another story I'll tell during that run. We're, we're out west. They sent us out west. 
we're out west and we're playing uh, the Fresno State of Oregon, one of those teams and one of those games to get to the get yep. to the Final Four. And Billy Martin and I have brought some DC funk to to the locker room. And we're banging on the lockers like high school style. Uh, and, then that, and I'm just making it up. Are you ready? But I'm banging on the locker and literally I'm running around the locker room, Keith, foaming at the mouth. A man has to do what a man has to do. And Ed Spriggs, who was the senior captain, says to me, hey, man, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> so the, 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 the championship game, look, we felt like we were going up against the Blue Blood. We felt like we were the team that, you know, wasn't supposed to be there. So we had to say we were chippy is putting it mildly. Uh, to say that we were chopping at the bit to get there is putting it mildly. To say that we did not expect to win is putting it mildly. Um, but the embrace of Coach Thompson of Fred after that was real. Yeah, I remember. It was we, a didn't, great we, we didn't talk about it in the locker room. Um, it was nothing. We, we didn't feel this need to go over to Fred and say, it's okay, it's okay. Because Fred was incredible, not only that whole season, but the game before he was playing the game against Louisville. So it's you know you know what flashes through your mind is uh, without everybody on this bench we don't get here like it, it, it takes one play one way or the other so it was it, it was a seismic moment um, I think it was a seismic moment for basketball in general um, you know yeah. because again we're we're showing up like villains we're showing mm -hmm. up like you know like we we we're, we're crashing the party. Um, but then you got to fast forward to 84 and you see that bear hug after we went in Seattle. Like, I want that pick stitch. I want the embrace from 82 and I want the embrace from 84. And that should be somewhere Georgetown plays front and center. How was so? Let's stay in the 84 moment for a second. So, how big a moment was that for? Well, the team, I'm, I'm it was huge, but John Thompson, Coach Thompson in general, was that. I mean, was it a big moment for him? I, I, look, after after reading uh, uh, the autobiography, yeah, um, it brought it clarified and brought some things more into focus for me. Um, it was it had to be huge for him, yeah, yeah. huge. And the way he answered the, the the first question, which was, "What is it like for for you to be the first black man to win?" Um, at the NCAA, and his response, only the way Big John could do, I resent the question. Yeah, It implies that a black man is not smart enough. And, and again, have I not taken some of those qualities and characteristics throughout the rest? Of course I have. Yeah. Um, but again, for me, as I told you earlier, not being highly recruited, Oh, if you bestow accolades upon me, I'm always a little whoa, whoa. What, what? What? I'm checking my pockets. What do you want? What? What are you trying to get from me? Um, so the moment was huge. The mo the moment was huge. It was incredible. But what I remember is when we got into the locker room, as happy and as much as you were celebrating, he stopped and broke it down and started thanking every player that ever had put on a Georgetown jersey for him. How dope is that? Yeah. How incredible is that? Here you are ready to go sow your royal oats somewhere, and this guy's telling you, whoa, 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 whoa pump, pump your brakes. There were people that put blocks, bricks into this. Like, it didn't just start in 84, right? So, um, you know, I... I mean, it just makes you appreciate it that much more. So, you know, there, there are players on that team um, that only played one year and, you know, sure. for whatever reason. Uh, when I'm still connected to those guys, if not just in spirit, um, through social media in any way that I can. I never thought I would be that guy, Keith. I never thought I would be the guy that would be like um, like still I, – I, it's not that I'm hanging on to it. It's just like – Everything starts from someplace, and it has to take you someplace else. I have I have a saying on on Hoya locker room, and, it's just, and to 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 just paraphrase it, it's more about you need to know where you come from and appreciate it only as it applies to where you are. 
only as it applies to the future. Not to rest in it, but to raise the bar. So, yeah, I mean. Great point. Yeah. Love my Hoyas, man. To talk about the building blocks thing, and that's, that's, that's an excellent point. It's something I was going to talk to you about was, you know, he thanked all those players. Did those players like Sleepy Floyd, John Duran? Did those guys feel like they were part of that championship because um, of that type of uh, family well, atmosphere or not? Well, I, I was fortunate enough to go to the 85 championship against Villanova and Chuck Everson. Um, and um, I, you have so much respect for the, the guys that are in the moment. Um, and I'm just speaking personally. Sure. I, I, I don't, I don't want to take anything from that, but, but, I'm proud as an alumnus, right? As an alumni, I'm just, yeah. uh, you know, um, yeah. But you, we're connected. Like they went to the uh, the next time they got to the final four was 2007. Yeah. And you know, I'm I'm glued to the TV. I'm not at the get, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm 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 emotionally invested. Um, but I, I just think you know we're 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 we are a different breed at Georgetown. Um, I mean, Coach Thompson made it pretty clear. Once you leave here, you leave here. But while you're there, the message is always about what came before you. So I don't know if that puts it in a different, uh, different, it's a different framework. Like it, it's more about, like I never, I never, after winning the national championship, me personally, Keith, I enjoyed it, but that I didn't want that to be the, the 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 biggest thing that I accomplished in my life. Right, right, right. I mean, it's almost like okay, so now I know where the the bar is: championships, right? The bar is CEO. The bar is you know the bar is always higher. You like you're always trying to to, to move move higher, and doesn't mean that you don't appreciate it, but it's it's just yeah he. And again, that, that's just me personally. You can talk to 100 Georgetown guys and you're going to get 100 different stories, which is why that Pandora box is the way that it is. <laughs> How about, so continuing with, with Coach Thompson a little bit and his influence, obviously, while you were at Georgetown, mm -hmm. was obviously tremendous. And how did that, how did that relationship uh, stay the same or change after you left Georgetown? And how did he influence your life afterwards? It, 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 well, just in the teachings that through four years of being around him, I had I had enough ammunition. Yeah, it, it, it was on me to take it from there. Um, but he was pretty. Um, uh, he was majorly impactful in me working for Nike. Um, I had a twenty. I had a twenty year career at Nike. Um, I can't say that um, you know I talked to him often. Um, but again, I, did, I, I didn't need to. That, that, that's not my personality. Um, there may be other players who, who wanted that or needed that. That, that, yeah. that wasn't me. Um, and the fact that he was on the board of directors at Nike certainly didn't hurt my career. <laughs> right. I'm pretty sure. Um, right. But yeah, I, 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 his teachings to, to, for me to this day are still important and still part of who I am. Uh, the impact is, I think the to play for a, a person, an individual like Coach Thompson, um, it, it's rare. It's an honor. And and being, I know you're 61. I claim 60. Um, I, I, you know, so I, I'm right there with you. Um, having been on this earth uh, as long as I've, as I, I prefer a straight shooter. I prefer someone telling me like it is, and. That, that was Coach Thompson. And sometimes, you know, those are things that you didn't want to hear. Yeah. But, but I prefer to have people around me to tell me where my blind spots are. Right. And so, again, just, you know, that, 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 that's all Coach Thompson. But it's mine now. I mean, you know. Right. I, that, that's the beautiful thing about uh, athletics. That's a beautiful thing. Your teammates, you can cheat. We can talk to each other during the test. So, yeah, I mean, but his, you know, being a part of that program, man, yeah, I, yeah, awesome. What, what's your feeling about the program? And, you know, when, when Coach Thompson left, mm -hmm. I mean, 
did the persona of the of the of the program change immediately? Because uh, um, there isn't the same feel. And uh, Patrick's probably trying to bring that back a little bit. I'm guessing. Well, I'm hoping he's, I'm hoping he's not trying to bring it back. Yeah, um, and I, and, I, and I say that obviously with with all respect. Um, I, I think he, Coach Thompson, is such a magnan, magnanimous figure. Yeah. Um, you know, he set it up for the next person to take what he established, and then again, you got to take it someplace else. And Patrick is only going to be as good as Patrick. But again, you have a springboard, right? I, I, his relationship with Coach Thompson was inseparable. Yeah. So now you got to put your wrinkle on it. And I think we saw a little bit of that at the Big East. I'll, I'll never forget the image of him talking to, I think it was Gus Johnson after they, after they uh, beat Creighton. And just the, the yell he let out, like, like, okay, we're starting to see his personality now. Cause we really, you, we really haven't seen his personality because he's, 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 bunkered down now he's locked in you know right. i mean the, you know you got you have people on him one day all from the next day because th this is the environment of, of athletics now i mean what have you done for me lately and for me patrick ewing coaching at georgetown is a dream yeah and if if, if you don't treat it that way like i'm not this is not about uh this is not an endorsement this is just real talk. Like, I mean, this this guy belongs at Georgetown as the head coach. This is not an accident. And just hang in there. You'll you'll you're gonna be proud of him. And so, yeah, I just think um, um, it's, this is a time for uh, um, for appreciation um, for Coach Thompson. And I think now it's time for Patrick to kick it in the gear for Patrick. Yeah, it, it's funny. I talk a lot about how different sports, different leagues are better when certain teams are good. Yes. And for the Big East to become anything like the old Big East, I think a return to prominence by Georgetown is very important. As wow. same thing with St. John's in, in the city, right? If those teams, if those teams can get back to where they were uh, back in those days, yeah, along with Villanova's success. And Connecticut returning to the to the league, I think the league is going to start to kind of bump up a little bit in uh, in prominence. You know, it has fallen a little bit. Obviously, I think. Sure. I don't think you disagree with that? Uh, you know, just the breakup of the old Big East. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think it's it's inevitable. Um, I, I I obviously I love to see more DC kids on. Um, the Hoyas. I'd like for Jay Wright to stay stay in Philly and stay out of DC. Uh, stay yeah. on the DMV, yeah. um, but yeah, I just think it's it's. Look, the idea in and of itself is it, it makes sense. It's perfect. It, it's just one of those things, you know. It's, it was genie in the bottle, uh, created by Dave Gabbett. So um, I don't I I don't think you 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 can you'll ever it, it dropped like everything else, like the, the Pac-12 or the Pac-10 dropped, the ACC dropped. Um, you know, you got you got some of your better talent leaving school earlier. The, the game has changed, right? But the Big East will always be as good as it can be. Yeah, it's as it's a it's as good as it gets for me. Right, it's, you know, as good as it gets. it's interesting. One of the things that has changed a lot is the kids staying in school. We talked about how when you were there, you know, everybody was there for four mm -hmm. years, almost, unless they, you know, left for whatever reasons. But I think one of the reasons Villanova has been able to maintain while all the other ones hasn't is Jay Wright hasn't gone after the one and dones those kids. He's gone after the next level of kids that'll stay and grow with the program. And I think if the other schools follow that model, you know, the big East will benefit from it. Right. Yeah. I just think the, the, the Pandora's box has been open. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you can reel it back in. You, um, you, don't, you, you don't think it's kind of cycling through because the, it was very successful for John Calipari, Kentucky for a while. Right. And then even Duke and North Carolina tried it. It, it isn't working right now or it doesn't appear to be. And maybe it's just a lull and, and whatnot. It seems like that model is kind of dissipating. Well, I, I, well, then I, I, but then we will get into a, a conversation about society. 
right? No one, no one really wants to tough it out if there's the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. Kids leave. I mean, kids can leave now and it don't even have to sit out. So there's no account. There's no real accountability now. It's yeah. all about now. I, I can play now. If this situation is not working, look, I can go get an extra two minutes someplace else or extra two touches someplace else. Uh, you got other individuals involved in these kids' ears about where they should go and what should be happening at the um, what should be happening at, at, at the program. I, I saw a um, a video. Kendrick Kendrick Perkins was at a, a AAU tournament someplace, and the parents were fighting in the stands. <laughs> so you yeah. know. It, that's where we're at now in society. That's where basketball is right now. And, you know, the NCAA, you know, we don't want to have that conversation. Um, what What is encouraging, though, is, you know, I think going forward, the kids will be able to benefit off their own likeness. Yeah. So there are some changes. Um, I'm a marketing branding guy, and I, I think that would be awesome. Um, I think also it would teach the kids – about business, it would it, it would encourage them to because there's a business of sport um, that afford, unfortunately a lot of athletes don't get involved in. Once they once 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 they participate, they don't get involved in. It. And I'm not gonna throw out any names, but guys like uh, Skip Bayless, like I need you to have played somewhere yeah. to talk <laughs> about the very thing that you're yeah. you know, you're making money off of. <laughs> but but again, I, I understand you. You know that that's that's entertainment, but I like I like the Hoya locker rooms of the world where this is my background all the time. <laughs> what door is that, by the way? I'm curious as I watch your videos. <laughs> what door is that? that behind that door? You don't want to go behind that door. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ten month old behind that door oh, waiting geez. for you, <laughs> like oh. Chuck. <laughs> where the monsters locked away. I got it. <laughs> Look at it. so let's again take our time machine backwards a little bit. Okay. So everybody got their opinion. We were talking about the old Big East. Everybody's got their opinion about what the best rivalry was. And there were some great ones. I mean, it doesn't have to be one. When you were there, who did you see as as the toughest games? What, what was the biggest rivalry for you when you were at Georgetown in your mind? So I, I'm I'm gonna try to answer your question because that's a, that should be an easy question. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't like anybody. But if you, it, the, the extra disdain was probably St. John's, because that's some New York, DC. Stuff. Yeah. But St. John's was, uh, was, um, yeah, that, that, that one was big. And then Syracuse, you couldn't get away from it because of Manly. Like they were never, they, they're still not going to let that go. Um, you I guys said, beat that in the last game they played. Because here. The, we, oh, right. and, yeah. and Coach Thompson, Manly Field House has been officially closed. Like yeah. that, that should be a T-shirt. Um, because John, Dern, John Dern's part was on that team. John Dern was a senior yeah. on that team. John yeah. Dern, Eric Floyd, Eric Smith, um, was Al Dutch? I think was Al Dutch on that team. Craig Shelton. Uh, yeah, yeah. That 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 was that team kicked in the door. For Georgetown basketball, yeah, because that was the elite A team that was up on Iowa by fifteen in the first first half, and they lost to Iowa eighty one eighty. Yeah, but they kicked in the door. So you fed then eighty eighty two comes, eighty four comes, eighty five comes. I have a question for you, Keith. Sure. Why is there no thirty for thirty or any type of documentary on Georgetown basketball? It's shocking to me. I mean, there has to be. You have UNLV. You have the Fab Five, which I give credit to. They they did their thing, but there's a certain there's a certain. Thing Is it a bias? Is it a bias? History versus propaganda. Yeah. And Georgetown represents the history. Everything else yeah. is propaganda. And you know, it's it's. I have mixed feelings. Uh, obviously, when Coach Thompson passed away, we were all uh, pretty shook. I remember getting the message. Um, I think I, I think I heard from Fred Brown, if I'm not mistaken. But I remember getting the message, and it took me a minute. But the outpouring of affection to me gave me a feeling of 
being a little bit disingenuous uh, because this guy. For oh, from else, you're talking about from, from outside. the outside, from the outside. Yeah. yeah. This, everybody had a John Thompson story. Yeah. And here I'm thinking I played for the guy for four years and all the stories I have, I don't really want to share. Yeah. At least not right now. Um, but, but that's, again, that's a society, that's a societal thing. We don't give people their flowers while, while they're here. And that's what Hoya Locker Room is. Another shameless plug. I apologize. That's fine. That's, a, that's, that's entirely right. acceptable on this show. That's giving my Hoyas their flowers while they're still here. I haven't let you swear. I've got to let you plug to your show at least. Well, so. and you, it, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It happens, happens to me sometimes too. And I feel like, uh, don't say that. <laughs> uh all right, so I, I get that. I, you know, I'm, I'm a little surprised Syracuse wasn't for, ahead of St. John's, but I get I get that New York City, uh, D.C. thing. I get that. Yeah, um, Syracuse in that zone, man. Come on out that zone. Come yeah. out that zone, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. I got to tell you, man. We're stirring up some old feelings here. Gotta, right? Come out that zone. <laughs> <laughs> What about individual players? We talked a little bit about one of them off air, but you know, tell me some about the guys that you just did not want to go against. Guys, you again, we were we were not backing down from anyone, but just right. nightmares for me at, at my position. Harold Starks at Providence was was a nightmare. But let me let me let me go back to actually um, the old biggies, like when when I was a freshman. You had guys like Stuart Granger from Villanova. You had uh, John Bagley from Boston College. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, just, yeah, just Eddie Moss from Syracuse. Was it Eddie Moss? Eddie Moss, Eddie from, Moss Syracuse, yeah. Yeah. from Syracuse. I mean, and these guys, Eddie Moss had this thing he would do. He would step on my feet as he was dribbling. <laughs> and I'm thinking, who does that? Like, but it worked. It was some, some a veteran trick. So, those were the that was my initiation. But then you fast forward. I played against Pearl when he was a freshman, I guess. And I'm on every Pearl highlight reel. And uh, thank you, Pearl. Um, <laughs> you know um, um, who else was? Uh, and I mentioned Harold Starks. But 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 I, but but I got to be honest with you, Keith. You mentioned Otis Thorpe earlier. I mentioned Otis Thorpe, but Otis Thorpe was just you know he was a he had a, a body like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he was yeah. playing basketball. Um, but he was just, yeah, you did not want to run into an older store pick or older store elbow. Um, <laughs> but there were guys like Troy Bowers at BC that a lot of people might not remember. He was a nightmare, just physical. Um, you know, it was, but but every game it was a, it, it was like that. So there was never a day off, but we had the luxury of being 10 deep in practice. So our practices were incredible. So the games were fun. Yeah, we got to the, and, and coach was a lot more affable in the game than he was in practice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, the playing style, you alluded to it earlier in the show, that the playing style was rough and tumble in the Big East in those days. And, I mean, I don't think college football conferences play as tough as the, as those games in the in the, in the the 80s in the Big East. I yeah. mean, gosh. I, I definitely I – would, I would foul out in the layup line now. <laughs> uh, there, there's no way because we we weren't hand checking but we were hand checking um and it was it was there was no love lost um you know getting to know i've known chuck for a while but not as intimately as now and i'm just meeting sonny and i'm just using those guys as an, as an example because they were just recently on but the ability for us to tell stories and and share shout out to Big East rewind yeah um, to share stories about the Big East because, again, there will never be anything else like it. And that's what I want the current current stock of players to, to kind of tap into because now I, it's your turn. So, like, right now, Villanova's, Villanova's dominating everything. Yeah. My, my Hoyas, though, we're, we're, we're in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen cooking. And I think, it's, I think they call it Ewing's gumbo, but we're in the kitchen cooking. Yeah, I think I think I agree. I think there's something working there too. And uh, as a Big East fan, still, I never really followed. I mean, I jumped around from Syracuse to St. John's. I have to admit, I was never a big Georgetown fan. Of course not. Time, but appreciated the the the. That's, the see, there we go. That's what we want. We want the appreciation. 
That's we, it. I mean, that's, yeah. you don't have to love teams to appreciate them, right? Mm-hmm. So um, that was that. And and players like Gene Smith, I talked about it earlier. We, it, it's funny. We've talked this hour about Georgetown and your career there and the influences. And we didn't talk really about Gene Smith. <clears throat> but Gene Smith was an integral part of that 84 team. If you just look at if you're a numbers guy, you go, wow, oh, what Gene Smith do, right? But right. you watch the games, you saw what Gene, the Gene Smiths of the world, make those teams go. I think very important. I appreciate that, really do. I'm so, not, not going to expound on it though, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> you're too. You're, you're you gotta you gotta you gotta promote yourself a little, Gene. You you got you, you I'm, I'm, Keith. No. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Keith. <laughs> it's good though, but. You know, you'll get there. You, yes, you shouldn't be shy about kind of talking about yourself. It's good. I mean, but you know what? Team is important, right? Team yes, is what wins, right? That's well, what gets I, that's what gets lost today in the game. I, I think what what oftentimes um, doesn't get uh, dissected or talked about uh, is chemistry. Yeah, right? it's chemistry, yeah. like because it's it's little stuff. It's it's Michael Jackson. Um, um, coming in as a freshman and I'm a junior and I'm making his life miserable in practice because in my mind, this guy can really play. Yeah. And I'm not going to let up on him. I'm not, I'm going to, cause he's going to start as a freshman and we need him to be really, really good. Or at least, at least like, Having not no surprises, like nobody's going to guard him the way that I'm guarding him in the Big East. And I'm going to make his life miserable. Now, we may not be friends. We may not be hanging out after practice, but that's not the intent, right? We're, we're here to win basketball games. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's this fallacy about, you know, all locker rooms are, are great and everybody loves each other. That's cool. Um, but when we're, when we're preparing for war, that's kind of that's that's sec, that, that, that that's second nature. I often tell a story. Um, my going into my sophomore year, I, I was I was I'm whispering this. I was I started the last eight games of my freshman year. Nobody knows that, um, except for Mike Hancock, who was a, a, a senior forward on that team. He was a junior forward on that team. He gives me crap for taking his minutes. <laughs> um, but going into that and going into my sophomore season, Eric Floyd, who was going to be a monster his senior year because he had a monster career up to that point, starts coming to the gym that I'm actually worked. That was my summer job that year. So I worked out incredibly hard every every day in the summer. Eric Floyd starts coming up. This is a superstar on our team. Starts coming to work out with me. And I'm thinking, okay, he showed up one day. Showed, showed up every day. Yeah. I'm thinking, why is he? Do- because he knows I'm going to beat him to death. I'm going to give him. We're playing full court one-on-ones in the summertime, drenched with sweat. Yeah. But what are we doing? We're building trust. We're building chemistry. So, you know, those things are not really talked about because, you know, it's in the moment. Um, But that's what, you know, again, I I think that's what made me an intriguing part. Um, Fred and I, we came in with four or five people. And Fred and I were the, the remaining, the two remaining. and. Fred and I were, you know, we were respectful, but we were competitors, man. We're playing, we're playing for minutes, but in the heat of battle during games, we're on the same page. Right. But in practice, it's a whole different deal. And we had a blue team, which was the first team. And we had a white team, which was the second team, obviously. <clears throat> the second team took pride in whooping the white team's <laughs> you know, it doesn't come off the same, Keith, without the expert. I'm okay with ass, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't come off the same. You can say ass. <laughs> but, yeah, but, 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 to, but to your point, like, I, you know, I had Reggie Williams and his son in the Hoya locker room. And Reggie Williams' freshman year was player of the game in the, in the, in, in the championship game. And I give Reg, Reggie a lot of flack, uh, but it's all in fun 
Reggie got my minutes in the championship game because Big John's bench was a revolving. Like yeah. again, it wasn't who started, it was who finished. And um, if there's one thing I would I would love to to implore or to suggest to Patrick is to kind of get back to that. Um, but you need players for that, obviously. Um, but it's just one of those things. If someone Big John had this way, if you were going good in the in the first twenty minutes, he didn't care who you were, or he was starting you in the second. I always liked that because you know it's game time situations, it's game time decisions. That's life. Life is sometimes you got to react in the moment, and right. the more that you practice, you should be reacting correctly. So. You know that, that that team thing was was really important, especially for us because he played so many guys. Michael Jackson should have been playing thirty minutes a game, but because you have a guy like me who's going to give you twelve to whatever eighteen minutes hardcore defense tempo, I'm going to play, and you naturally became okay with that because yeah. we're winning. <clears throat> right? So yeah, you know, it's just yeah, it was. I think it was just one of our keys to success, like. You know, just believing in the other guy is just as good as you. He may be talent. He may be, you know, have a different skill set, but we all needed that to win. I just think that, you know, the narrative would be different if we had won three Final Fours in five years. Oh, I yeah, I agree. It definitely would be. It'd be a different narrative. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but you know what, Keith? I might not have met you. <laughs> and then you wouldn't even talk. Then you wouldn't even be talking to me, bro. Well, you know I would always be talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Gene, I appreciate you coming on and spending this time with us today. And like it seems like happens to me every week, I could go on for another hour and a half. I think with you, but we'll talk some more because we're going to have you on Wednesday night. We're going to focus on the Final Four that you played in, yes, sir, and maybe even a little bit about this year's Final Four. So pay attention to who's in it. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to watch now because I haven't. Yeah. I, I, I would be lying to tell you I've been watching, but I will. I will. <laughs> I'm going to have to prepare. Yeah, that's okay. I, we're going to talk about your experience as much as anything. So okay. we'll we'll see you Wednesday. I appreciate you coming on. Everybody, watch uh, Hoya Locker Room, uh, and you guys will enjoy it. I cannot uh, emphasize that enough. So, Gene, I appreciate it, Gee. and uh, we'll be talking before uh, before long. Hoya, salute. Thank you, sir. You have a great morning. You too. Bye bye. So I guess today, Gene, Wa uh, Gene Washington, where did I get Gene Washington? Gene Smith. Sorry about that, Gene Smith. I had Gene Washington on my mind for some reason. Um, host of the Georgetown or, or, or the Hoya Locker Room uh, NCAA champion with Georgetown in 1984. What a great time we had. He'll be on with us uh, March 31st at 7. Well, he won't be on at 7 p.m. necessarily Eastern time, but he will be joining us during that two hours. So... Guys, join us then. Join me Sunday live. We'll be talking about the NCAA tournament. We got to cover some football free agency stuff. Baseball's kicking in. We got a lot to talk about. And I want you guys to be there and enjoy it with me. You guys have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. I'll be on with Mac and Jack in just a few minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs>